Good afternoon. I'm Lori Johnson with Leonardo's Children's Museum. I'm the marketing uh, person there, and I'm here with Executive Director Tracy Biddle. We're going to talk about all the wonderful, fun things that are happening at Leonardo's right now this summer. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Yeah, well, the first and foremost, summer camp, Da Vinci Day Camp. Yes. This is amazing, and we're in the thick of it. We're, what's yeah. going on? We are. We are in week three of the eight weeks that we hold of Da Vinci Day Camp. Um, I am really impressed this year. We've done this a lot of years, um, but this year I'm super impressed with the teachers and their lesson plans they're coming up with, the incredibly creative lessons that we are doing. Um, this week's a little uh, close to my heart because it's uh, fitness, food, and fun. Mm -hmm. It's kind of my, my thing. I love it. Um, I looked out the window the other day and they were in the parking, one of the classes was doing some things in the parking lot where they were taking their heart rate and, mm -hmm. and doing some things. They were taking some breaks and um, they were making some things with food. Um, the cooking, as much cooking as we can do. All, all healthy things. Yes, yes, with a real emphasis on health and healthy living and lifestyles. So with that being special to my heart, I have loved camp this week. Well, and you know, it is sobering. The American Heart Association is saying children uh, obesity is on the rise. So exactly. this is so important and we want to keep it positive like I know Leonardo's does. It's sure. all about good fun and being a part of that. That's right. That's so, right. And then next week yeah. we're going to be, um, it's Da Vinci Okay. Creation. Da Vinci Creations right, next right, week, right. yes. Um, and we're kind of doing a week honoring um, our namesake, and we will be looking at all the different things that Leonardo da Vinci had done. Of course, an artist and a scientist. Um, and we study art and science in our camps and at our museum. So we'll be looking at the history of what he had done, be recreating <coughs> some of the things that he did. And um, that's just always a really fun study of Leonardo. So that will be the focus of next week. And, and let's remind our viewers that uh, Oklahoma State certified teachers are in charge of this. This isn't right. This is quality education. These yes. are people that do this for a living. They yes. they're experts. And yes. I've actually heard from some of the teachers, and they say the summer is even better than school because they just can use all their creativity exactly. and just they have fun. Exactly. Smaller class size, more one-on-one, -on -one, mm -hmm. a little more assistance. We have right. apprentices in there. Right. So yes, we're very, very um, happy with the quality of teachers. And one of the reasons we wanted to be sure and share that today is that we do have openings. Um, the very last week, which is Superhero Week, is filling up very fast. So right. if you have any children that are interested in that, <laughs> better you better hurry. jump. Better. Um, however, just to give a preview of July, right. um, since uh, week four, is Da Vinci Creation Week, and then week five, that's when we're July 2nd through the 6th, although we will not be having um, classes for camp the day of the 4th of July, but we will be having a fun event that we're gonna get to in a minute. That week, we are gonna be doing 50 Great American States. Awesome. And so that's, I think that the, the teachers will be really creative. This is another big one, is Star Wars Week. Okay. <laughs> that will be July 9th through the 13th. So now, are all there, are of there some openings in that one? Yes. A little bit still? Yes. Okay. Yes. I do not think we have officially had to close where we are closest is Superhero Week and Star, Star Wars Week. So right. keep that in mind. The week after that will be holidays around the world. We're going to do Christmas in July and look at all the different holidays that different countries from around the world um, get to celebrate. We're going to study all those in a week. We're just going to celebrate all week long. Well, that sounds like a fun part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want to sign up. Then uh, we, the week number eight will be our final week. That's July 23rd through 27th. We will have Superhero Week. That is leading up to the Enid Comic Con that will be uh, the I first hear, weekend in gonna August. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be big. I, the rumblings are people from all over the state are coming to that. Yes. I mean, it's a really big deal. I wasn't familiar with it at first, <laughs> and so my world has just been opened up to this whole yeah. new um, industry or arena. And so to get everybody ready for that, people, that, I'm sure the children will be um, wearing their costumes and doing some mm. activities that have to do with superheroes. And let's face it, that's just fun. It is. It is. So. Now, uh, say you're hearing about this for the first time, what's the easiest way to get 
to get an application to get my child involved with that. Anytime you want to learn about Leonardo's, my first recommendation is to go to leonardos.org mm -hmm. and go to the website. Um, you can click on all the different tabs there, but you can go to our summer camp um, page. And then there, from there, you can even get the application and the permission release or program release, mm -hmm. everything online, get it all filled out and just bring it to the front desk. However, if you would have some questions about it, um, we strongly encourage you to just walk into the front desk. We have those forms there, and we will help you fill those out um, at that point in time, and we will accept payment. I do want to add, though, um, I want no family in need to not apply to camp. We um, had a quite successful fundraiser. Right. Very proud of the staff and the fundraiser that we put on this spring to fund children that want to go to camp that might not otherwise be able to afford that. So we have a scholarship application and you can pick that up at the front desk or on the website and submit it and that might help with the cost of camp so it's great for any child don't don't think about the cost get your kid involved it's gonna be a lot of fun yes I during these summer uh, lazy summer days lazy summer days are great I raised two children but I also remember um, they needed their mind stimulated right they needed to um, keep themselves kind of in the swing for school I remember going back as a child on the first day of back to school after like the third grade and thinking how in the world do you spell what? I mean, <laughs> you know, your, your brain just gets tired and lazy. And it's fun to have their mind stimulated, especially with, with relation to science and art. Right. Because that's what we're going to need in the future. The leaders and the business professionals of the future needs that science and art education and comfort zone. And we offer that right there at Leonardo's. Good, safe environment for them to be stimulated all day long. And and the teachers are, are wonderful. We just got some, we, got, we get lucky. We get wonderful, creative, teachers and it just is fun every time I go over there the kids are just engaged and having fun and I think I want to do this I don't want to go back to my office <laughs> <laughs> well besides summer camp uh, no rest for the weary at Leonardo's 4th of July is coming up make plans mm -hmm. it is our 16th event I'm I glad think. you looked that up because I, I didn't know what it was but yes we have an annual party that's mm -hmm. hometown celebration on the 4th of July it is very much one of my favorites. Yeah. Um, I'm a warm weather person, so I like that 4th of yes. July. Yes. Um, and so from 10 a.m. to noon out in our outdoor feature, Adventure Quest, we will have um, special planned events. Mm -hmm. um, there is a low admission that you will pay to get in the door because we're going to feed you lunch too. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to have kind of a party from 10 to 12, carnival-like atmosphere, be doing all types of crafts and uh, activities where you can win little prizes and then that will culminate with a lunch being served and if you have purchased your entrance into the museum your lunch is included um, um, with that with that um, admission fee. Now there is something special you're doing for our military. We, we support our military yes. with words, but we're actually doing it with action here at Leonardo's That's on right. the 4th of July. That's right. What, um, you want to tell if you are an active person in the military, mm -hmm. we would love for you to come to our event and you will be admitted free. Um, for that person that has active duty military mm -hmm. card right. um, because we would like to honor them that day. Right. Their, um, their uh, duties have, are what makes this country what it is and we're right. so proud would like to give back a little um, for everyone else we have discounted admission and that discount is made possible by Bruckner's That's of true. Enid um, they are our sponsor and they're helping us get that lunch ready for everyone yes and Bruckner's is an amazing local local Enid business That's that right. supports uh, Leonardo's this is right so uh, there's a, a lot of things. There is, I believe it's the second sensory friendly summer night. It yes. is July 10th. Yes. Um, you want to just expand on this? We've had one in June. This is the second. Right. So right. Um, as we've, I don't know, as um, I've been involved with education and things like that, I think we're recognizing more and more some of the sensory issues with children. Whether a child is severely autistic, mildly autistic, Asperger's, 
whatever it might be. Sometimes being in the museum is a very loud and exciting and can become stressful experience for mm -hmm. a child that might have some of these sensory right. sensitivity right. issues. So um, we are working with four our kids and we are making the museum available to them exclusively from five to seven on um, July the 10th. Um, it is only $3 per person. However, if you're a member of Leonardo's, you are welcome to come and attend during that time for free with your children. Um, we It's a much more quiet atmosphere. Right. The general public is not allowed in. Um, we hope that the parents can really interact with the children and have a really high quality playtime. That's amazing. Now, speaking of free, we have another free event coming. We uh, like free. Friday. <laughs> it would be first Friday, uh, July 6th. It's, it's uh, Adventure Quest. Do you want to just give a few words on what people can do we on just, that? We think, we're so grateful for Main Street mm -hmm. Enid and all the partners. That I'm so proud to be a part of downtown Enid. It is a beautiful downtown. And with us there on the corner, we participate in First Friday. And uh, what we like to do uh, is open up our outdoor park. And during these days of summer when the temperature can get really high during the day, it's so nice to play at the park in the evening. Um, we have a water table, of mm -hmm. course, that is on daily. But man, when the, when the shadows get long and there's lots of, of shade and shadows, it's a great time to play at Adventure Quest. And so anybody that's down and kind of walks around the, flat, the square and gets their tummy full or shops a little bit and then they want to just blow off some steam, we will have Adventure Quest open um, for, free for free that evening. Yes. It's been that very is, popular so far this summer. Yes, it has. We're proud of that. Well, I mean, a castle, a pirate ship, yeah, I, I understand. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's awesome. <laughs> Now, just to remind people that Backyard Bugs is uh, still in town this summer. If you haven't gotten out there, you need to do, uh, you need to go do it. It's awesome. Uh, but I have a little bit of a date oh, coming Oh, are you going to do it? I, this is exciting. Is this all right? Okay, so I'm with the executive director. If anybody says it's okay, she's going to say it's okay. I say go for it because right. I'm really excited about it. Okay, so daddies and their daughters. The Princess Ball is going to be at a new location this year. We're going to have it at 81 Ranch, which is an incredible place. Fairy and tale atmosphere, I tell you. Yes, very wonderful. And mm -hmm. they're uh, working with us, have made a gener donated a portion of that to make it possible. So thank you to 81 Ranch. And we're the premier Princess Ball. I, I just really feel um, in this area, we really do it upright. And so moms, daddies, daughters need to get the date of September 29th, Saturday. On your calendars. <laughs> and don't worry, we worked around football the best we can. Yes, we did. <laughs> so we're, we're gonna, it's gonna just be an incredible experience. Mm -hmm. We're really excited about it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you wanna, you know, put it on your calendar, but keep checking on our social media, on our website, leonardos.org, for all the particulars as more and information when comes when tickets will up. become available. Exactly. Yes. yes. This is Community Talk. I'm Lori Johnson from Leonardo's. This is Executive Director Tracy Biddle. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Hi, I'm Vicki Grants, and this is Jet, and we're with the Enid SPCA. And we are working really hard to make Enid a more humane community. Be sure and check us out on Community Talk. Welcome back to Community Talk. My name is Crystal Barwick. I'm the founder of the I Am Enough movement. This is my friend and co-founding member, Carol Wyckoff. We're Hi. here today to talk about the I Am Enough, I Am Enough, sorry, Women's Empowerment Day this coming Saturday, June the 23rd at the Spring Hill Suites over by the Highway Patrol's office and the Walmart. You all know where it's at. It's a relatively new hotel in town, but we're going to have a great time there. And we're here to talk about that. But before we get started, I want to talk about something that's near and dear to my heart that I happen to find today because our group is about bringing awareness to body shaming, suicide prevention, abuse, and mental health issues. This is the quote I found that I think will hopefully speak to volumes to a lot of you. I don't think people understand how stressful it is to explain what's going on 
in your head when you don't even understand it yourself. How many of you that are watching have a hard time understanding depression, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, and all these other things? Maybe some of you have it. I have bipolar disorder, and that's the reason I started this. I'm tired of being ashamed of who I am. I'm tired of people judging me. As you can see, we have shirts made. They say, I am enough. We're wearing these out in public. We're proud to be who we are. Carol, why did you join the group? Well, past experiences from childhood on up through my first husband uh, just uh, was a lot of um, negative things that showed up in my life. And I didn't realize it at the time until I uh, got out and joined um, my nursing career. Then I noticed a lot of things that I had just kind of buried, gotten used to. And when Crystal started talking about this, I thought, oh, <laughs> that's part of me. So um, I've built me up with the help of my husband, my new husband of 36 years, that uh, we've uh, uh, got something to offer. I am my own woman now. I can be independent. I don't have to have a man and try to raise our daughters that, you know, they don't need a man to make it work through this world, that they're good enough. And, uh, and they, they've taken off on it and taken me for real. <laughs> Well, folks, you heard it. We're trying to do something different. We're trying to offer Enid and the communities around us something different. If you're afraid to talk about your problems, we are a mentoring group only. We do not do anything more than mentor. We provide a lunch or a dinner, excuse me, every second Wednesday of the month. We do this at the Civitan Homes on Garland Road. Um, it's right behind the fire department over there next to Garland Road Nursing Home. And then uh, this coming Friday, you can come to one of our meetings. We meet at 10 a.m. at the Enid Public Library. Um, and then this Saturday, let's talk, Carol, about this great event we got going on. Uh, I am so excited, are you? I definitely am. I can't wait <laughs> until we've got, Saturday. Yeah, we've got food, we've got sandwiches, We've got pasta salad. We've got two chocolate fountains. Um, we've got cupcakes, purple velvet cupcakes. We're all about purple, as you can see. Yeah, we love our purple. Um, we've got some desserts that are gluten-free options that you can dip in the chocolate. Um, we have a guest speaker. Her name is Sherry England. She's out of Medford. She's Christian. I don't quite know what she's speaking about because I kind of left it up to her. And I didn't think about it, but I should have asked her. <laughs> That's the funny part about this whole thing. Um, but we're going to have vendors that you can shop from. We had to have some sponsors to help provide for this. Um, the first 30 women that come in there, um, we will be giving them goodie bags. There'll be something in there for everybody. Free loaves of bread. Um, this is a great event. So if you look for the signs that'll be out on the road, you just come over there behind the Highway Patrol's office. Hot pink signs. Hot pink, that's what I was hoping for. <laughs> um, we do a craft show and that's how we all met. Um, we've been trying to get this going for over a year now and we finally are successful. Um, we have about 15 to 20 vendor, uh, not vendors, excuse me, members that come. Um, we are gonna be open from 10 to four um, come out there, talk to us. The YWCA is setting up uh, for about two hours. Um, we've put a lot of work into this um, event. It is, I think, going to be the best Enid has to offer. Um, this is free. I mean, where else besides the library right now are you going to go and get fed for free? I don't know if the library is doing theirs free or not, but I know they're doing a really great event. Um, over at one of the parks here during the summertime. Um, if you have girls, boys, 
men, women, it doesn't matter. Just because it says Women's Empowerment Day, we encourage the men to come out, don't we? We sure do. You men have been abused also. You men deal with mental illness. You men deal with suicide. Don't be afraid to come out and talk to us. Get to know us. Get the feel of what we're about. Be a part of something that's great that's happening in America, folks. And America is a melting pot of a great community. You will not find a better community to have great, awesome things in. You want to do it? Start it in Enid, Oklahoma. It is worth it here. I've only been here since uh, March of 2013. This community is a blessing. They welcome awesome new things. They welcome people to come in and to make a difference. That's what I love about this community. I've lived in Florida, Colorado, Maryland. Um, I'm originally from Altus. And the one thing that I have found that here, um, we started this a year ago, and we started this all with a fashion show. We're doing more events. We have these meetings. If you can't make it to the Wednesday meeting at the first of the month, at the end of the month, come to the library one. And we're gonna be having many meetings here starting shortly um, at Da Vinci's. Um, August the 25th, we're doing a fashion show. Um, we're doing this at the Oakwood Mall. Um, we're gonna have refreshments that day and we're just in the planning process of it, of it so far. Um, also, July the 4th, um, it's looking tentatively for um, Government Springs Park. Um, we're gonna be having a picnic starting 11 free hamburgers and hot dogs. Um, if you're afraid to come out on the 23rd, you're like, oh, I'm not so sure about this yet. Come on out July the 4th, have some delicious sides and hamburgers and hot dogs with us. My husband and I are paying for the hamburgers and hot dogs. Please, my number is up there on the screen. Um, contact me to let me know if you're gonna make it to either event. Um, ask me questions, I love questions. Yeah, there's no obligation on your part. Uh, if you've got something that you need to be heard, just go ahead and find one of us in a purple shirt and we'll listen to you. We might know where to get some help. We are all about sharing and whatever you tell us stays between us. We do not go against your privacy. We want to make this change. There are, there are kids out here suffering with body shaming, peer pressure. Why in this day and age do we have to have peer pressure, folks? Why do these kids have to go to school and be ashamed of who they are or be ashamed of their bodies? Okay, well, the nice man's saying we've only got a few seconds left. So we're gonna go ahead and, Carol, would you like to say anything else before we close? I think we've pretty much said it all. Uh, does it make any difference what religion you are? what your problem is if you just need somebody to listen to you or your sexual preference we're non-judgmental yeah. we want you out there remember this saturday spring hill suites 10 to 4 come on out and join us and then if you want to we're going over to holiday and express after that after our vendors shut down and get everything put away we're going to go over to holiday and express and go swimming join us for that get to know us it's going to be a great day of an empowerment for everybody. Just because it says women does not mean men cannot come along. So come on, men. What are you waiting for? Women, what are you waiting for? Get your daughters, get your uh, granddaughters, get your nieces, get your neighbor's kids. Bring them all out. We want you out there. We might be fit in there like sardines, but we're going to have a great time. And remember, the food's why it lasts. Well, Carol, I want to thank you for joining me today on Factory Connection. I'd like to thank the viewers of Factory Connection for watching today. We appreciate everything you do. And if you get the Enid News and Eagle, I've been in there. Read my story. It's still on the Facebook page. I would love to talk to you about my situation. I am enough. Carol is enough. You are enough. Remember that. No, God made you perfect as you are. Don't ever believe you are less than that. Remember, we're always there for you. 
Well, we want to thank you for watching again. Have a great day, and we hope to see you on Saturday. See you at the 23rd. Bye. Hello, I'm Cliff Reporter of the Booker T. Washington Community Center, located at 800 South Fifth Street. Please come out and visit us at some of our programs, and please watch for us on Community Talk. Hi, welcome back to Community Talk. My name is Amy Both, and I'm the Executive Director at Journey House. And my name is Brandi Ehart, and I'm the nurse manager at Journey House. Uh, we want to talk to you a little bit today about the, um, our ministry um, and the services that we offer. Journey House is a nonprofit uh, organization. It's an interdenominational ministry. We're working together with several churches in our community. And um, we want to offer services to those in our community whose lives have taken a detour due to sexual activity. Um, and we want to be a connection point and offer resources and referrals in our community as well. At Journey House, we're able to provide free pregnancy tests. We also have free ultrasounds that we can perform once we have the verification of the pregnancy test. Um, we will also be able to provide free consultation and education for STD and STIs. Some of the STDs that we would be able to test for would be gonorrhea, chlamydia, um, herpes 1 and 2, trichomonas, syphilis, hepatitis C, and HIV. We would also be able to provide treatment and um, medications for certain of those STDs, and we would also be able to provide doctor referrals and other resources in the community that would be able to help with some of those positive results. The reason why we offer free services is that we want to provide for a client in their specific time of need. We want to break down those barriers that if they don't have the financial means to be able to seek help in certain ways that we want to just meet them at, at their need at that time. We also want to empower clients to make wise and informed cho choices about their sexual health and any um, unforeseen circumstances that are coming up in their life at that time. At Journey House, we want to offer options education. We want to provide information about fetal development, about abortions, um, also about um, adoption as well. Um, and we do want to provide education so that we're empowering our clients to make the best decision. Um, we also offer resources and referrals to other programs that are available in our community. There's so many wonderful programs here in Enid and we want to be able to be a connection point to our clients um, for things such as parenting resources, housing or food resources, um, and any assistance that they might need. Um, and the last thing we want to offer is post-abortion support. Not everyone who has experienced an abortion um, has trauma after, but we want to be a place that's a safe place where women can come um, who may be experiencing some, um, some difficulties after having an abortion, and we want to be a safe place for them to come and, and receive that support um, from fellow women as well. Um, our office is located at 1820 West Owen K. Garriott. Our phone number is also 580-234-5660. We're open Monday through Thursday from 10 to 4, and you are more than welcome to call and make an appointment, or we would be happy to take you in if you just want to stop by and visit us at any time. Yeah, and I think our information is also at the bottom of the screen, um, our website as well as um, Facebook, and so mm -hmm. if you need to, um, you can call and make an appointment, or you can walk in. Um, we do take walk-ins as well. Um, at Journey House, we really want to be um, we really have three goals in mind. And that first goal is we want to be motivated by love. Um, we don't want to discriminate based on religion, ethnicity, gender, or sexual orientation. Um, but we want to treat each person with dignity and respect that comes through our doors. Um, we're not here to change people's hearts or change their minds. We're really here to listen first and foremost, to answer any questions that they might have, and also to provide them with information. 
We also want to serve each individual with compassion. A lot of people who are facing these detours in their life come with apprehension and concerns. So we're not here to judge their choices. We want to be able to meet them at that time and be able to come alongside them and help them walk through these situations and be able to come out of them with positive outcomes. Mm -hmm. The client's well-being is far more important than whatever agenda or choices that we want them to make. Mm -hmm. We just want them to make the well-informed decision and be able to provide that decision for themselves and each individual is going to be different. Mm -hmm. And the last thing we want to do is we want to offer hope. We want to infuse hope into everyone's situation. Um, no matter what situation they're facing, we're not here to judge their choices, but we're really here to provide support um, in the midst of their situation and to remind them that you're not alone. Uh, you do have time to think through this decision and you have help. There's so much available, as I said before, in Enid, um, different resources available and organizations that are more than willing to help um, people in need. And so we want to remind our clients of that as well. Um, we just thank you so much for allowing us to come and share a little bit about what Journey House is about here on Community Talk and we look forward to meeting some of you. Hi, I'm Jennifer Kissling with Loaves and Fishes of Northwest Oklahoma. Watch for us on Community Talk. Well, welcome into this segment of Community Talk. I'm Frank Baker, and with me, he's known for so many darn things, almost all of them good, but with me, the executive director of the Fly Film Festival, Christopher Snead. Christopher, welcome. Thank you. Glad and to be here. He was nice enough to ask me to kind of sub in at the last moment, tickled to be here, and I just assumed we'd be talking about the Fly Film Festival, which is coming up in August, but good heavens. No, you've got three different events coming, Stardust Melodies, uh, which will be June 30th, a video basics for adults, and then for the kiddos, a fly youth camp, which will teach them the basics of filmmaking along with making their own short films, so that's cool. Well, one of the things before, Christopher, we get into specifics, I think it's a sweet story, uh, all of this is sponsored by the Jula Foundation for Independent Cinema is involved yes. with this, and let's talk about what that is and, and the name itself. Okay. Um, well, Jula is an organization, once we started FLY and realized that we wanted to keep doing it, um, we thought we need to make this official, and so we decided to put together an organization. Um, and at first it was through Main Street, um, but then we moved uh, and created our own board and started this organization. The name Jula actually, um, when we were trying to think of a name, we wanted to something that symbolized taking care of people because that's a lot of what we're doing you know taking care of um, kids and teaching them about technology and um, helping filmmakers so who takes care of you better than your mom well most of us who takes <laughs> most of us who takes better care of you so um, that name Jula is a combination of my birth mother and my adopted mother's name that, that is a sweet so. tip of the hat mm -hmm. to them. I like that a lot. Yeah. Well, so, so when you see Jula mentioned in cooperation with all these events and the Fly Film Festival, uh, that's kind of the background on that. And also I was sharing with Christopher sitting at Rotary and we had the director, and I believe the name is Tavisovsky, of the Oklahoma Film and Music Commission. She was a special guest. And as she was mentioning film in Oklahoma, and she said, by the way, you have a great independent film festival right here in Enid, the Fly Film Festival. So you've got statewide notoriety. That's nice. That's nice to hear. It's, it's good to have a shout out. Now, uh, like I said, we've got so many things that are going on. Uh, we have Stardust Melodies, and it's going to be, I think it's going to be fabulous because it's, it's live music by various singers from soundtracks, and it's a new fundraiser. I, we'll kind of have to go back and backtrack. I guess the Ponca Playhouse has been doing this for a while, and this year Gaslight and Ponca Playhouse are joining together. So yes. tell me a little bit about the background, then we'll get into specifics of dates, times, things like that. Well, uh, yes, Ponca, Ponca Playhouse has been doing this as a fundraiser for them. And last year, uh, or their last fundraiser they had, they invited me to be a part of it. So I was one of the performers. And it was really a neat, uh, fun, uh, somewhat simple little idea. And they had such a great turnout. Everyone had such a great time. And the president of Ponca Playhouse came here for one of Gaslight shows. Uh, the dinner theater mm -hmm. at the symphony and loved the building and thought this is a perfect place for something like that. 
So um, I just sort of started gathering all of the necessary players from each of the venues, and, and here we are. So we're going to be putting this on at the symphony in the dinner theater, the theater ballroom. And it's going to be Saturday, June 30th, 7 p.m. And that is, I've, I've directed in there, you've been involved there in various uh, endeavors. And it's a wonderfully intimate setting. Yes. I mean, all, all the rooms at the symphony center, the main hall for the symphony is wonderful, but there's something about that space where you're going to be. It's yeah. just, it's a marvelous place for music. Yeah, it's, it's a strange combination because it is very intimate, but at the same time, it still has some, some of the grand grandioso of the rest of the building. I mean, it's very nice mm -hmm. and, uh, and beautiful, and we'll be showing um, either posters or clips from the movies that the songs are from. Oh, I like that. So um, just to kind of add a little bit of more, more magic to it all. Okay, now broad brush strokes. We don't have to go yes. through every song, but sure. and I know we, we won't know some of the Ponca singers, but we've got sure. some local folks. So who are some of the folks and songs we'll be hearing on the 30th? Well, I know that um, Kathy Nolf, who most people in Eden know, uh, who has her band uh, Bringing It Back. Mm -hmm. And uh, she will be doing a couple of numbers. One is Cheek to Cheek, I believe. Um, and the other one, don't remember, I'm drawing a blank on it because she changed the songs at the last minute. Um, we also have um, Katie Pierce, who I believe last time she was in Gaslight was in Rent. I think so, and it was great to have her back yes. because she's kind of been down in the city, and it's yeah. uh, and she's an Enid girl, plays with the symphony on a whale's win or trombone, <laughs> right. but she's a very gifted artist. Absolutely. Um, I used to tease her when she was younger and tell her she reminded me of a young Barbara Streisand. I can see that. A little quirky. A little quirky. Beautiful, beautiful yes. voice. Um, so she'll be singing a couple of songs uh, for Once in My Life. Oh, I like that. And um, Alex Ewald will be singing. He was in Next to Normal, along with um, two of his cast members from the same show, Mitch Lyon, who's actually done quite a few shows up there. Uh, he was the lead in Next to Normal, um, and he was also the lead in Rent. Mm -hmm. um, he was also in a band, so he's no stranger to music. Good. And then Robin, and I am not going to butcher his last name, uh, but Robin was also in Next to Normal. He played The Sun, if anyone saw that. And he's got a wonderful set of pipes. Good yes. heavens. Very, very pop, very refined. Mm -hmm. um, he can move through notes so effortlessly, so we're excited that he's on board. Um, and, then, and then I'll be doing a couple of numbers. Um, I got talked into doing a few songs, even though I'm going to be uh, kind of ch organizing everything, but... Uh, they asked me to be a part of it since the Ponca organizer is going to be a part of it as well. She'll mm -hmm. be singing, uh, Megan. And uh, so we're excited. We've got a good group. It should be fun. It's going to be Saturday evening, June 30th, 7 o'clock in the Enid Symphony Space, uh, sponsored by the Jula Foundation, which we talked about for independent cinema. And you can go to Fly Film Festival. Uh, dot org forward slash stardust or now our tickets also on sale at the two locations or just through the they website? will they will just be through the website or you can get them at the door okay so and it's well worth coming because you're uh, helping out the gaslight and, and Carmen and I recently went to the Ponca Playhouse hadn't been over there in a number of years and they do fine work yeah it's a it's a good group of folks. You're going to see some marvelous entertainment. Okay, that's one of the little trifecta of fabulous things this rascal's got going on. Now, the next one, I think, is intriguing because it's, it's video basics for adults. And yes. this looks like in about six hours, you're going to learn a lot about both video and filmmaking. And uh, the person who's going to be teaching it is Dan E. Tibbs. Tell me a yes. little bit about his bona fides. Well, Dan actually does this uh, as one of his income, uh, sources of income. He, he teaches video in Oklahoma City. Mm -hmm. And we met Dan through the Fly Film Festival. He submitted two projects, um, one that won an award here, and he's won several awards at some other uh, film festivals, I believe, um, doing feature length and short. And so we started, uh, you know, we, we've been doing this for children, which I know we'll get into, but we, we had a lot of people respond online uh, adults who expressed interest in learning some basics, um, which is great. I, I taught a very similar course, uh, probably a lot more basic than what he did at Autry. Um, and a lot of church people came, a lot of people who were interested in, in doing videography uh, professionally. Um, and so we just wanted to, there's not a lot of opportunity here. They don't teach that at any of the schools here. Mm -hmm. um, and so if there were any adults that were interested, we wanted to provide that opportunity. Well, and I also think in this world of social media today, you see so many people using video 
to promote maybe a cause or a right. group they're involved in or maybe try to promote their business and God bless them, mm -hmm. some of them would be well served to take a course like that, to yeah. just learn a little bit more some of the the boundaries and because and, I, I think their end product would be better, even if it's just something they're knocking out for social media. Right, absolutely. Um, there's always there's always more to learn too, so it never hurts to to get a refresher course. I, th I think so. so. Now, Danny Tibbs will be teaching this, an award-winning director. It's a six-hour workshop. It's going to be on a Saturday, so you're not going to have to like sky out of work or anything like that. Right. Fifty dollars, which I think for learning about uh, both video and filmmaking is a heck of a deal. Saturday, July 14th, and it will go from 11 in the morning uh, until whatever six hours would be five o'clock. Five o'clock. Five o'clock, yeah. and it's at NOC, and there again. You can go to fly, flyfilmfestival.org forward slash adults. So you could scope that out, and uh, I think it'll be fun. Yeah, I think it will be too. So just, just think about it. if you think you might have some use for something like that, and I can see a lot of people who probably it would be a beneficial thing to have some basics of filmmaking and videography. And even if you just want to do it for fun, I mean, it's, it's a good six hours to spend working on a project, and, and it'll be a fun time. It'll be a social social event too so well and there's nothing like learning which uh, in a group you know yeah. I mean certainly you, yes you can YouTube video everything but there's still something about that communal aspect of learning which I think most people learn better in that kind of setting absolutely all right we've got five minutes left for the yes. the big finish and this is cool because I, I think it's just like what Gaslight has done with Drama Camp yes whenever you can teach kids about the arts expressing themselves in whatever format I think that's gold and you put together a fly youth camp it's going to be a week-long filmmaking camp. It's for kiddos ages 12 to 17. Yes. Uh, and Patrick Wine, good Lord, is going to teach everything. Mm -hmm. Lighting, cinematography, and audio. And the, the youngsters will be working on their own short film. Yes. That's July 23rd through 27th, 1 to 5 daily. Tell us a little more. Uh, well, this is our third year doing this. Mm -hmm. And the previous two years, uh, we've had a full class. There's, it's 12 uh, slots. Okay. Um, we've had a full class every year. And the kids have blown me away with some of the things that they have made because it, it takes a lot of time to put together any video project, a lot more than most people realize. Yes. And these kids have done some really amazing work uh, that we try to put online for them. Mm -hmm. So when they come and learn all of this, um, they work on a project, they finish a short film at the end of the week. Um, Patrick and I will help get it finished editing and, and we will debut it at the Fly Film Festival in August. How about that? And then if they choose to, the kids can uh, choose to submit it to other film festivals just to get that experience if they'd like. Excellent. So I, I just feel that whether it's what you're talking about with this camp or we talked about drama camp or lead guitar yeah. or taking debate mm -hmm. at school, I think anything that enables a person to get out and express themselves I think is magic because you just uncover capacities and passion in yourself that you maybe didn't know was working absolutely in there well we've got so many things to follow up on stardust melodies that's going to be june 30th at the gaslight theater or, i'm sorry benefiting the gaslight and ponca playhouse at enid symphony you can go to fly film festival uh, dot org forward slash stardust video basics for adults uh, and that's going to be on Saturday, July 14th. Once again, go to flyfilmfestival.org forward slash adults. That's 11 to 5, 50 bucks. And then, of course, the Fly Youth Camp. Only 12 slots, so don't you tarry. It's for uh, young people ages 12 to 17. Patrick Wine and Christopher will be teaching that. Lighting, cinematography, audio. You'll make your own film. You'll be on the road to spiel. Bergianism, something like that. Uh, we've only got like a couple of minutes left, and that's July 23rd through 27th. Once again, go to flyfilmfestival.org forward slash camp. Got just a couple of minutes. Sure. Uh, tiny sneak preview of the Fly Film Festival coming in August. Yes, um, it is the second um, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday in August. Uh, we have about 30 films that we'll be playing on Friday and Saturday. Thursday night's a free event. People can come to Costello's and just hang out and learn about the film festival and meet some of the filmmakers that'll be attending. Nice. Um, it's a exciting come and go um, event, um, and this is our fifth year, so uh, we're chugging along. 
Well, what's amazing is you always see, I mean, yes, there's some folks from Oklahoma, but it's just all over the place and the range oh. of topics is staggering. Yes, uh, we've covered everything in the past from men's rights um, to just uh, sci-fi comedies. Um, and the quality of these is way better than people expect. They're, that's the biggest thing I hear is they're always surprised at how good the films turn out to be. Yeah, so you really, if you've not been to the Fly Film Festival, and I think I've made a portion of every year, maybe missed one, but it's just so worth going. So our guests have been Christopher Sneed. Remember, follow up on all these cool things, uh, adult filmmaking, youth camp filmmaking, Stardust Melodies coming to the Symphony Center on June 30th, and of course later on, Fly Film Festival. On behalf of Christopher Sneed, I'm Frank Baker. Thanks for watching Community Talk. I'm Trisha Mitchell, Executive Director with the 4R Kids Foundation, whose mission is to provide support to children and adults with disabilities. Please look for us on Community Talk.